All right, my friends, now we'll talk about pages. Pages are important for creating consistency in your multi-page documents. We'll also talk about master pages and how to use them and page numbers and hyperlinks and lots more. Let's go to create new. Make sure you click on print. You select A4. And please ensure that the preview button at the bottom is ticked so you can actually see what you're doing. And we'll keep everything as is, portrait, and I would like you to highlight the pages box and press the upward key until it says eight. Eight pages. Please untick facing pages. Maybe have two columns, please. The column gutter would be five. Keep the margins as is. The bleed would be three millimeters because that's the industry standard. And that's it. Click Create. Now, if you want to have a look at your document without all the guides, press W, Print Preview. And scroll down and you'll see eight pages. Now, if you look at the bottom left corner, you might see a number, number one. This is the number of the page you're currently on. So if you click on the downward facing arrow next to it, you'll see a list of all the pages available to you. And if you click on another number, it will take you to that page. So now we are on page four. InDesign has created a new panel for us to work with our document setup and pages. So instead of going to file document setup, like previously, and layout margins and columns, again, like previously old school, we can now go to properties where all the information is available here. So you can see the page size, the orientation, the width and the height. This is the number of pages. So if you would like to add more pages, you can just highlight this box over here and press the upward key. So now we have 12 pages. If you would like to change your document to facing pages, that means like a spread or a book, you would tick this. If you need to adjust margins, you can change them over here. So margins are these kind of magenta purpley guides over here, and they're just there as an aesthetic so that you don't go too close to the edge and that you center your content. And sometimes you would like your content to be even more centered and have a wider, clear, blank space over here. Okay, if you click on Adjust Layout, then you can change all these options over here and you can even change the bleed. You can close that. Now, if you would like to edit a single page, so just this page, I'm on page four. It says page four over here as well. If you click on edit page, that's how you can edit a specific page. You can change the actual size of it by clicking and dragging, which we don't need to do now. So you can just undo control Z or command Z. And if you would like to change the margins and columns just for this page only, what you can do is click on margins and columns and you can add maybe four columns. So you have four columns and click OK. So that means if you scroll up, all your other pages will have two columns and just this page will have four. And this is quite normal in InDesign because sometimes you need two columns or two text columns or two columns for images. And on another page, you need four columns. So now you have um, the freedom to change that around. Now head to the Properties panel and click on Back. If you are struggling to find the properties panel over here, head to the window option in the menu bar. So here at the top, and this is where all our panels live and properties is a panel. So you can find properties here and make sure it is selected and ticked. And that's how you find your properties panel. Okay, so let's head over to the pages panel now. Click on pages and scroll down. 
and you'll see a drop down list of all the pages you currently have. Now, if you would like to remove some pages, you can click on a page and click on the bin or trash icon. If you want to delete multiple pages, you can hold down the shift key and then click on the delete trash icon. If you would like to add some pages, you can also click on the plus over here for creating a new page. Now we're going to put some graphics on there, just a couple of images, and we'll see that it will be displayed here in our thumbnails. So let's go to the rectangle frame tool and we could just create a rectangle that covers the whole margin. So that magenta box, click and drag and control D or file place and select any image and click on open. And again, if you would like to fit this image, you can either right click fitting content aware fit or do the same thing in the frame fitting options in the properties panel. So this little flower looking icon. Okay, now go back to the selection tool and you'll see it's visible here in a small thumbnail on page eight. Um, if you wanted to make this your first page, you would have to click and drag and you can move it to the top of the deck or the pack. So if you scroll up, you'll see that our page now is our cover page or our first page. Now you can actually move this a bit lower and we'll talk about this little A that we see on every page. And it says the A master applied. So what is the A master? You can see at the top here, the A master. So the A master is where you put all the graphics that you would like to see on every page or multiple pages. So we'll keep it simple and we'll start with a one A master. So to head to the A master, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can either double click and you'll see the A master highlighted or you go to the page navigation at the bottom, bottom left corner and select the A master to ensure that you are there. Now things that you add on your master pages will be stuff like a page number, your company's logo, a header, a decorative element that you would like on every page. Maybe if you're creating a report or a news ad and you would like your website to have a link, you can hyperlink your website or your contact details and add it to your master page. So let's start adding a few elements. Let's start with the page number. So let's go to the type tool and what you start with when creating a page number is a text frame. So you click and drag and I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So that's where our page number will be. Now the way to create a page number is rather long. So I want you to pay close attention and go to type in the menu bar, insert special character markers, and current page number, or the shortcut on the side, which is four keys. So good luck doing them all simultaneously. Now, when you click that option, it will give you a number. And if you don't see that option and it's grayed out, it means that you're not currently in a text box, in a text frame. So make sure you are indeed in a text frame. The reason it says A is because we're currently on a page called the A master. So this is number A and it's also a formula. So if this formula is set, you'll see that all your other pages are numbered. And we're actually going to have a look at that now. So zoom out and go to the selection tool. Now we're going to go to a random page. So click on the page navigation and select a page, number two for instance. And we're going to zoom in and you're going to see that the page number is applied. It's currently hidden under this image for this specific page, but you'll see that all your pages are indeed numbered. So the, the formula did work. So let's go back to the A master and let's add some other elements to it. 
So we're going to add a few graphic elements. So you can go to the rectangle tool this time, and you can create a rectangle that lines up to the red line. It's gonna be a sort of header or decorative element. And then you can go to your fill and either choose one of those colors, or if you double click on the fill, you can change the color around and choose a little pinky color. And there we go. And now you go to the selection tool. Now let me show you a trick to duplicating this shape at the bottom. So selection tool, hover over this shape, make sure it's selected and alt and drag it down. So this is the shortcut for duplicating. Now, if it's wobbling around and you want to make sure it goes straight down, hold down the shift as well and let go. And there we go. Now, if you press W, you'll see a very thin border. Now, if you're not happy with that, you can always make the frame bigger by going to the selection tool, drag the white box down. And then you might have to redo this one. So let's delete it. And again, Alt and drag and shift to keep it aligned. Now press W. Okay, what else can we add in here? We could add a logo. So we could go to the rectangle frame tool and where would we place this logo? So we're just doing kind of a random design here on the spot. And later I have an actual exercise where we'll make a really cool brochure with a really nice master page. So that's coming, don't worry. So back to the logo and click and drag and create a little container and control command D file place. And you can select the clothes are cool icon again. And now go to the content aware fit or right click fitting content aware fit. Still not exactly great, but that's why we go to our selection tool. We select the content grabber, the button in the middle, wait for the orange brownie border to be highlighted. And we're going to decrease or make the proportion smaller. So control command comma. and move it around and that's kind of okay. Now make sure you click off it and deselect. And if you press W, this is what it currently looks like. Now you can decide wherever you would place your icon, your logo, you could place it down here. You could make it smaller. You can make it much bigger. That is totally up to you. Let's keep it here for now. Now let's go to the type tool and we're just going to add some text in. And again, this is not going to be super pretty, but we're going to create a better exercise later. Click and drag and create a text frame and maybe type something in like uh, annual report or brochure or whatever you want to create for your document or newsletter. I'm going to write annual report 2020. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to make sure I go to character formatting controls. So the A and I make my font bigger, press the upward key, maybe make it bold. Again, we're not too worried right now with how it looks. Maybe all caps. What we could even do is move, go back to the selection tool and move our text and put it over here. And if you want to get rid of the caps because it's a bit too much, you can do that too. Now to make sure that our text is in the center, go to the selection tool, click and drag our text box. And if you hover, you will see a pink, if you click and drag in and hover, you'll see a pink vertical line that goes straight down the middle. So that is telling us that we've just aligned this text frame to the center of our page. But what we can do to make it even better is click and drag and extend our frame to the end of the page. And then we go to the type tool 
we select our text and we select a line center. And that's another way to know that our text is in the center of the page. Now, another thing that we can change on our page is the margins, because maybe we don't want our text to go to the edge of the page. We want it to start kind of here and end kind of here. So what we could do is make the margins, so the magenta box, shorter. So to do this, you would have to go to margins and make sure this is not highlighted. If this is highlighted, it means that this is all linked. So make sure it's not linked. And uh, what you could do is increase the top. And that means that your margin will go down and increase the bottom, which is this one. So that means that when we place text in later, it will fit perfectly in this column. Now let's go over to our regular pages and see if our master pages is applied to the rest of the pages. So I would like you to click at the bottom and select number one, page one, and maybe press W so you can see a print preview and scroll down and you'll see the same elements on every page. Now we're going to start placing text in. So we're going to go control D or file place. And we can go to text documents and select uh, economics again, maybe or text wrap. And what I would like you to do is hover over the top left corner and hold down the shift key and you'll see a snaky looking arrow. Now this means that your text will be placed and spread it across all pages. Hold down the shift key and then click. And if you scroll down, it has filled your pages with the text. Now it stopped over here because there's no, no more text. And if you press W, you'll see that it fits perfectly in those two columns. Now say you would like to change something on your master page, but in a regular page. So let's say on page four, you don't want it to say annual report 2020 and you want it to say monthly report 2020 or April or something like that. So what you'll need to do is unlock your master page item. So just so you know, everything that you put on your master page is locked on your regular pages. So if you want to go and change something in your master page, you have to go back to your master page and change it over here. But that will apply to the rest of the pages, to all the pages. So if you want to just like um, individually change something on a single page, so just on page three, the way to unlock your master page item is to go shift command or shift control click. And that has just unlocked the text frame. And again, shift command click on the box behind it. And now that is unlocked too. So now we have two unlocked items. And now you can go to the type tool. You can highlight this, this whole text and type in April. And there we go. Now on the other pages though, it will still remain locked. Now that is it for our master pages for now.